Hello everyone, welcome to What If a Say Becomes a Bartender Part 1, Chapter 1, The Bartender and the Magic Girl, Please Leave Me Alone. Kuo Student Council President Sauna Shitrai, better known as the Devil Sona Sitri, groaned as she held her face within the palm of her hands, Tsubaki her queen stood as stalwart as possible beside her, as the two took the whirlwind of craziness that was Seraphal Leviathan. This whirlwind of craziness came with a sight of suffering caused by none other than the spinning magic girl in the room. But so tan I came to see you said magical girl pouted. I told you, you can't visit unless you tell me in advance. The usually strict but professional student council president retorted rather loudly, but all my meetings just go cancelled today, so there was no way I magic girl Levi could tell you. She complained as she twirled and struck a magic girl pose to this on a citri could only massage her temples as she felt her skull being pounded with a growing headache. Look sister, I am busy I have a meeting with Rias in a few moments, so I can no longer entertain you, Sona told her sister bluntly, to which her sister pouted, you are leaving me to talk to Rias. I will go give Serzichas a good beating for this she said leaning over her sister's desk, as she waved her magical wand in fluid motion, indicating some form of slapping beating, as she continued pouting. Seraphil please don't her younger sister moaned and continued massaging her temple. Fine sister if you don't play with me I will go declare war on all other factions right now, the Satan threatened as she crossed her arms under her considerable bust and turned her face sideways. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. Alright fine. Sona relented which earned a wide smile from the Satan who jumped into her sister's lap and hugged her. Thank you Sane. I missed you so much. Her older sister squelled as she hugged her sister. Tsubaki please inform Rias our meeting will have to be delayed. She ordered her queen as a tick began forming on Sona's head. Tsubaki nodded and could only offer sympathetic looks to her king as she went to inform Rias of Sona's current issue. So Tan I bought you a matching magic girl costume, why don't you try it on? Seraphol Leviathan asked pleadingly as Sona began rambling on how she would never wear such things, all the while, Tsubaki could only offer one last sympathetic look to her before going away to inform Rias of the delay. Seraphal had spent hours with her precious younger sister, much to said younger sister chagrin, she eventually had to leave due to the fact her sister had to attend her meeting with Rias. She knew what the meeting was about, how couldn't she? Serzichas had been spending hours of his work time trying to find a way to allow Rias to escape the wedding. She could relate as the heiress to how Sitri, she had many suitors all to be frozen and scared off, but she couldn't emphasize as unlike her Rhea's odds were stacked against her, and she was trapped. Serzichas could only do so much as it was an issue between devil houses, while she had offered her support, Serzichas had turned it down stating, I will save my sister through my own actions, she admired the redeed for his determination to protect his sister. Seraphol stretched as she walked out of Kuo Academy, it was now night time she spent as much time as she could with Sotan, but unfortunately an irate Rias and Sonachan proved too much for the magic girl Satan, but she left bound to return again, Seraphol giggled as processed the event that had resulted her leaving. Seraphol was already bored and it hadn't been less than five minutes since she had left the company of her beloved younger sister, and Seraphol Leviathan, one of the four Satans was bored. She had no work to do today, neither did she want to do any in the first place. So she decided to indulge in a pastime of her which was going to bars to try drinks and just to try and have fun, after all, when your job is the head of diplomatic affairs, it's nice to kick back once a while. She had decided to go to Kuo's red light district, skipping as she did and enjoying the shocked looks from people who glanced her way a smirk, finding its way onto her lips, part of her being a magic girl was the shock factor. The lights of the Kuo red light district a rainbow of red, fluorescent pink and purple, reflected off her purple magic girl costume, as she stood at the entrance she began glancing over the names, seeing things that caught her name. Hmm. The pink ride, red ritz, the lux what kind of names are these? The Satan spoke as she stamped her foot at reading the ridiculous names of the establishments, she crossed her arms under her considerable bust, as she continued searching for a name that caught her attention, she began walking deeper into the district still unimpressed by the names. Coming towards the center of the district there is a small plaza in which there are four buildings, the first building she glanced upon, which was the first building that one sees as they entered the plaza caught her attention. It was a bar called Panic Room, the name was different that was for sure, but what caught her attention more was the fact the building was more muted colors of black and dark purple, creating a regal and mysterious appearance for said building, once Seraphal's attention had been caught it was hard to get rid of. Panic Room? Met time to create panic I guess the magic girl Satan cackled before skipping up to the establishment, letting herself in the interior of the bar, was well lit around the bar and entrance, but became dimmer around the center area, while Seraphal could hear the faint hum of music coming from the level above. She also received her fair share of stares, but was ignored as the patrons minded their own business. The tables, chairs and stools took on a silver metallic color, while the bar itself had a dark black top, while the drinks were on silver shelves and lit with dark purple lighting. 
the establishment was decently busy, but most of the customers were in tables or booths of their own, while the bar itself was actually empty, she could see a brunette man polishing off a glass, as he glanced around the room before their eyes met, he stiffened slightly before he regained his composure and continued polishing the glass between his hands. This brought a grin to the Satan's face as she skipped up to the bar before taking her place on a stool directly in front of the brunette bartender. As she got closer she could better make out the details of the bartender, he had chocolate brown eyes and his brown hair was spiky, while he was dressed in a formal red shirt and black pants, his body was average, but she noted he did have some muscle. Nice outfit the bartender said as he nodded towards her magic girl outfit, while his eyes gave her a look over, his voice was calm but betrayed his age, indicating he was still young no older than 25, and Seraphil knew he was checking her out, but she didn't mind. Thank you, I am magical girl Seraphil bartender Chan. She spoke casually as she waved her wand in front of the bartender, the bartender cocked an eyebrow at the suffix and scratched his neck before putting down the glass he just polished and leaned over, are you even old enough to be here? He deadpan to which Seraphil crossed her arms under her bust before upturning in her head, of course I am, a magic girl never lies about her age, she spoke as if it was common knowledge, the bartender cocked his eyebrow once again before sighing and deciding to take a chance, so what can I get you magic girl Seraphil, he asked politely her name stumbling out of his mouth as he was not used to such names. Seraphil liked this bartender already, why don't you surprise me? She spoke with a challengingly smirk, the bartender smirked back. All right challenge accepted he retorted before turning around to being preparing her drink, Seraphil tried to glance over the taller bartender, but he did everything close to him and she couldn't see until he turns around with her drink prepared. He placed a glass before her before pouring her drink out of her shaker, the drink was a vibrant pink and Seraphil couldn't help but marvel at the drink, bending her head down to be eye level with it in a childish display of curiosity, her actions earning a chuckle from the bartender. One magic girl cocktail on the house the bartender announced in between his laugh, Seraphil was flattered that he had just made up a drink, thank you bartender Chan. She spoke with glee before taking the drink and sipping it, tasting it on her tongue. At first she tasted an explosion of fruit, as if a magic spell had been cast in her mouth, resulting in an explosion of fruity flavors, and before Seraphil knew it, she had downed the drink much to the bartender's amusement. Whoa the Satan spoke in a childish tone as her eyes were wide as she felt the coolness of the fruity drink flow down her throat and into her stomach, but she was curious as there was no burning taste of alcohol. Did you even put any alcohol in this? She quickly quizzed in suspicion, the bartender merely smirked and chuckled, that's a secret he replied as a staring match occurred purple against brown, before it was broken by an overexcited Satan, moo, it's not fair you aren't telling me she pouted before doing a 180, even if you didn't that was the best drink I ever tasted. She cheered as she leaned over the bar towards the bartender, a large smile emblazoned on her lips, her face close to his as their eyes locked for a bit, the bartender blushed at her compliment before he turned to the side and scratched his cheek with his index finger. Uh, thanks that's very nice especially coming from a girl as cute as you he managed to utter, as a small blush marked his cheeks, Seraphil couldn't help but smile as she leaned over further giving a show of her cleavage. Aw, you're so cute bartender Chan almost as much as my so tan, she giggled as she bopped him on the nose with her wand, the bartender leaned back from the weird action in his eyes before smiling at the Satan's antics. Oh, I forgot to ask you for your name. She suddenly spoke as she pointed her magic wand at the bartender. It's a say hi to you he informed her with a smile to which the Satan mimicked. Ice Chan. We are going to be the best of friends. She decreed as she hugged the bartender who blushed and stammered before he managed to pry the overeager magic girl off him. Why yeah, we are. Now another magic girl special. She demanded with a wave of her magic wand before the bartender smiled and got to making the drink for his new magic girl customer. Chapter 2. Love and Advice. The say hi to the bartender of Panic Room rose from the realm of Morpheus due to the rather loud ringing of his alarm. At 6 o'clock two hours before his shift, he sighed as he managed to drag his body up before swiping his legs out to lean over the bed and rest against the floor. He slammed the top of his alarm stopping the continuous ringing, his brown eyes trailed over to a photo by his bed before he sighed and bit his lower lip, his hand reached out a small amount of shaking visible before he placed the photo face down. Not a day goes by he mentally sighed before glancing at his left arm, a tattoo of several chains wrapping around a small lizard. He gently patted his left arm a powerful heat emanating from the tattoo, but he was used to it and therefore was never bothered by the heat he always hid it under his shirts though. I'm sorry friend, but I left that life behind. He mentally apologized as he shut his eyes. A few more moments of silent regret passed before he rose from the bed, he went to the bathroom of his one-bedroom apartment and began getting ready brushing his hair and teeth. As he continued the mundane task someone else occupied his though the weird magic girl Seraphil, she was rather jolly, and if he was younger he knew he would be drooling all over her, but he had grown up and had to maintain some semblance of professionalism. 
He did admit the girl was quite attractive, although he wasn't sure what to think of her, she was a bit weird not to mention her age, he didn't believe she was above 18, until she actually gave him an ID card which proved otherwise, although he did find it amusing that she was actually posing as a magic girl in her ID card. He created the magic girl special for her, while he didn't admit to it having alcohol he did put a small amount to round out the flavor despite Sir Awful being small, she drank a lot of the special 36 to be exact, and by that point, she should have been at least a bit tipsy, but if anything she got more hyper. By time his shift ended and the bar closed they had become fast friends with Sir Awful, promising to visit him again as she left kissing him on the cheek. He almost blushed but shook his head of that memory before he continued his ritual to prepare for his shift. As a say hi do the bartender got ready Sir Awful Leviathan a cosplaying magic girl Satan was meeting with her favorite retied Satan after a tiring day of long boring meetings for the magic girl. Serzich's Chan. She cheered joyfully as she walked into Serzich's office who was sat behind his desk doing some paperwork while Grafia stood behind him. A wide smile graced Serzich's as he turned to Grafia who rolled her eyes. I believe that is enough work for now, you can take a break, Grafia relented allowing Serzich's to spring from his chair in delight. Sirach Ann, how are you? He greeted her as she skipped up to his desk. Amazing how about you did you find a solution for Rias yet? Seraphol's cheery demeanor almost switched as small frown graced her lips, while Serzich's expression became natural. Unfortunately no, Serzich's sighed. I am sorry Serzich's con if I could I would blow away the tracer away with a spell. She stomped before waving her wand in frustration. Is there nothing I can do? I know I offered before, but you are getting more desperate Zechi. She admitted as she glanced at the other Satan gripping her wand between her hands as she bit her lower lip. No Sir Afol, this is something I must do on my own. I couldn't prevent Rhea's getting into this situation, but now I have to get her out. Sir Zichia spoke with determination, Sir Afol nodded understanding why Sir Zichia didn't want to accept her help, but she couldn't forgive him for not accepting her help, he was getting desperate he tried to hide it, but she wasn't his friend for nothing, and she could see it in his eyes. If you ever want to relax I went to this place yesterday called the panic room and the bartender con there made a magic grill special for me, it was amazing. She spoke with excitement as a warm feeling filled her body at the memory as she looked up at Serzich's with stars in her eyes. Serzich's expression turned from neutral to a smile quickly, oh? What's the name of this place? He asked with curiosity as he had rarely seen Seraphol this excited, despite her being excited most of the time. It's called the panic room the bartender there his name was Issei Haidu. She elaborated, um, Issei Haidu? Serzich's mused, you wouldn't happen to have searched his personal details would you Seraphol chan Serzich's teased as his smile turned into a teasing one the magic girl Satan froze at the teasing before snapping her head to the side. I didn't need to, all I needed was to cast a spell, and he told me everything there was she said crossing her arms under her bust, while Serzich's just smirked. Oh in that case what did you learn? He spoke with curiosity. Issei Haidu 23 years old worked at the panic room for the last year. He was born in Kuo but went abroad for university, but he dropped out and came back to Kuo where he now works as a bartender. She recited casually, she couldn't help but look up the bartender's personal details he interested her, but he was too professional with her not spilling much about his personal life. Although the look of relief on his face when she showed him his ID card that proved she was above 18 was priceless, it was as if he dodged a bullet. Maybe we should drop by sometime, Serzich's mused as he tapped his chin. Let's go right now. Seraphol cheered with excitement as she grabbed Serzich's arm ready to bolt through the door, were it not for a silver-haired maid to appear. Sorry to be disturbing you, but the elders wished to meet the Satan's Grafia spoke formally, both Seraphol and Serzich's shoulders dropped in annoyance and disappointment. Right now? Seraphol moaned in annoyance. Yes, she replied. Magic girl Levi is annoyed Seraphol pouted as she crossed her arms. The quicker we get through this meeting the quicker we can visit your bartender Serzich's pointed out, Seraphol pouted a bit more before sighing and her shoulders drooped. Fine. Let's go, Seraphol sighed before walking forward dragging her feet in annoyance. Let the record show that magic girl Seraphol wanted to go to the bar first, Seraphol stated as she held her magic wand out as she began marching behind the door, while Serzich's chuckled as he and Grafia followed the annoyed magic girl. Issei Haidu was calmly cleaning a glass as he glanced around the bar. Weekdays were slow, and this left too much time for the bartender to contemplate something he'd rather not do. His mind was always drawn to memories of her. His fingers tightening around the glass, but he came to his senses and managed to avoid a hazardous situation. Sighing he turned around and put the glass back on the shelf before picking up another. He heard the faint noises of small heels clicking against the floor of the bar. He turned around to come face to face with another beauty, a woman with long silky raven hair and alluring violet eyes, but his gut told him there was something more than alluring. She was dressed in jeans, a black blouse that hid the sexy form beneath, but it still gave a good look of her cleavage, and a black leather jacket, her skin was flawless with a healthy complexion. 
She took a seat on the stool in front of him, he turned around putting down the glass he was polishing her arms resting on the bar as she tilts her head up to match their eyes. Issei lips curved into a friendly smile as he spoke with phrase he has honed for the past year of bartending, good evening what can I get you tonight? I would love a good cocktail she replied casually, her voice soft and feminine, he immediately came to the conclusion she had been in bars before. Anything in particular? He asked, do you have anything with tequila in it? She hummed, yeah I do want tequila sunrise coming up he replied before turning around to promptly mix her drink, pardon me for asking, but where are you from? You are definitely not from around here, if I had to hazard a guess I would say you are European, judging from your accent he made conversation as he mixed her drink his voice normal and innocent as possible. People didn't want to come to a bar where they would be aggressively questioned they wanted a calm atmosphere, and if the situation called for someone with an ear to lend in the situation, he felt that wasn't out of the question. Yeah I am not from around here, and I am European was my accent that noticeable. She replied back unperturbed by the question, no your Japanese is pretty good, I lived in Europe for two years for university, so I can tell easily he replied casually giving up information about his life, by giving up the information it made him more approachable, and begins to build a sense of trust that will lead to the person being more comfortable around him. Interesting, in that case where do you think I am from Europe? She questioned interested with what his response would be, I would have to guess Italian he answered as he turned around and placed her drink in front of her, the tequila sunrise was a mixture of orange and red. Got it in one she hummed in surprise before taking a sip with a straw, the drink fruity, but the undertaste of tequila present. I got lucky, I say hi to your bartender he introduced himself with a smile as he stuck his hand out, she offered a friendly enough smile before shaking his hand. Rainer Vincenzo she introduced another customer came up to the bar and called for a say. If you need anything just call me over he informed her to which she nodded before he went over to attend to the new customer, both exchanging friendly smiles as they departed. Issei spent the next 30 minutes attending to other patrons however he could not help but glance from time to time over at Rainer, who seemed to be contemplating as she occasionally took sips from her drink. He could tell that she needed to get advice or something off her mind, and this is where bartenders fulfill the role of part therapist and advice givers. He calmly walked over to Rainer before leaning back giving a relaxed open pose to make her feel at ease, he offered a gentle smile. Penny for your thoughts. He spoke as calm and comfortable as possible trying to set a comfortable and amiable tone. She glanced up at him a flicker of doubt and thoughts racing through her violet eyes before a sigh escaped her lips before she glanced down at the bar. Is it that noticeable? She said with what appeared to be a forced laugh, his say lips creased into a frown. No, I just have seen this kind of thing before. He replied calmly and honestly, it's nothing to be ashamed of it's normal to have something on your mind or bugging you, the thing is how do you tackle it, he pointed out she glanced up at him, she could see the hesitation in her eyes before a sigh escaped her lips, I love someone at work, but he is a lot higher up than me and he gives me jobs to do, and I take them hoping he would notice me, but I feel like he never does. I am in Japan on a job he asked me to do she began spilling as if the gates to a dam had opened, but Issei didn't say anything and steady leaned down to be eye level with her as he listened, I do job after job hoping he would realize, take the hint I have asked him for dinner, but he is usually too busy to go out for dinners. It's irritating, but I can't bring myself to hate him her hands clasped together and tightened around each other, but he didn't say anything just continuing to listen, I want to tell him, but I fear losing what we already have, and that he might not take me seriously I want something more, but I think it's out of reach, and I don't know what to do she finished as she bit her lower lip, before glancing up to see his reaction all she received was a nod of affirmation that he understood her story, while his face had a neutral expression set in stone. I see, what do you have to lose by telling him? He spoke with his hand resting on his chin, she glanced up at surprise and she replied, it would jeopardize my relationship with him, make things awkward with him, aren't they already? He told her honestly, she bit her lip as she took a moment to think before Issei continued pressing his advantage, I can relate, I used to have a crush on my childhood friend. We were close, very close I developed feelings for her, and I was too scared to admit them cause like you, I feared what we had he began telling his story, by telling his own experiences, he would further the sense of trust and make her more comfortable around him, but then I thought what do I have to lose, we were such close friends that I felt our bond would be unbreakable, even if I admitted how I truly felt. He left a pause, what happened then? She asked with a hint of curiosity, a slightly forced smile creased his lips, but she didn't pick up on it, we both liked each other, and she just like me had the same fear of ruining everything we had, and therefore was too scared to admit her feelings. We were both relieved and happier that we admitted our feelings. I never found out if our friendship would suffer because we never broke up he finished, wow, so you two are still dating until now. 
she spoke in surprise and a hint of jealousy. No, he clenched his fist, his nails digging into his palm, and a steel glint traced his eyes. She waited with bated breath she was about to speak, but he cut her off. She died he could see Raynor visibly flinch before she reached across in a surprisingly gentle but hesitant gesture. I am sorry she spoke rather sincerely. It's all right I have come to terms with it. Anyway you came to me for advice, my advice would be try it what do you have to lose? If anything he will be losing out will he not? His tone cheerful and earnest, her eyes once again flickered before her hand retracted, and she bowed her head before glancing up a smile on her face. D thank you Issei, your words were helpful she thanked, but then the phone call cut through their conversation to which Rainer answered. Hello? She began talking, but Issei could not hear the other side of the phone. Alright I am on my way she spoke before she closed the phone and offered a smile. Once again thank you for the words, I have to finish my job she spoke with a hint of disappointment. It's alright, want a drink to go? He offered with a smile. Sure she replied as he whipped up one more tequila sunrise before they exchanged goodbyes, and Rainer paid and left with a smile. As she left he turned around turning away from the view of the patrons, as his hands dig into the shelf of the drinks, he grits his teeth as anger was flowing through him, the memories of his failures assailing his mind, before he took a deep breath as he tried to calm himself. Issei Chan. A rather familiar cheerful voice called out, his eyes widened before he put on his bartender smile as he turned around. Seraphil welcome back. Chapter 3. Bitterness and Guilt. Hey, Issei Chan. Seraphil greeted the bartender who smiled back as he looked at the small magic girl, before glancing at her two companions, a man and a woman. The man was a redeed dressed in a snazzy purple suit, while his companion was a silver-haired woman dressed in jeans and jacket, as well as a formal shirt. Back so soon? Issei chuckled as the three took a seat on the stools in front of him. Yup now one magic girl special please, magic Seraphil Chan demands it. She demanded cutely. I will take one as well the redeed man seconded with a smile. Do you have anything without alcohol? The silver-haired women asked politely. Sure, I have some juices how does avocado sound? Issei offered with a smile. That would be lovely, Grafia conceded with a small smile. Apologizes I didn't get your names, Issei spoke politely as he put his hand out to Serzich's first. Serzich's the man smiled as he shook Issei's hand both men having good grip, Issei then turned to the silver-haired woman. Grafia she introduced herself. Welcome to the panic room I'll get your drinks right away. He welcomed with a smile before turning around to begin preparing their drinks. So how has your date been bartender Chan? Seraphil asked cheerfully. It's been fine a bit slow here and there, but other than the just a normal day, he replied as his hands began moving with fluid grace in preparing their drinks. Another couple of moments passed before Issei turned around and handed them their drinks. Do magic girl specials he announced as he pushed the two drinks towards Serzich's and Seraphil. One avocado juice he stated lastly as he pushed the juice towards Grafia. The three patrons clinked the glasses against together. Cheers they all replied before taking a sip. Issei watched their expressions as they turned into one of surprise before they taking another sip, followed by an expression of joy except Grafia, who just had a small smile tugging at her lips if anything. Seraphil downed the drink before sighing. Aw, oh, I missed that another one bartender Chan. Seraphil demanded as she pointed her wand at him, while Issei smiled as he turned around to prepare another drink for Seraphil. So how has your day been Seraphil? Issei asked over his shoulder as he prepared the drink. Ugh, so boring there has been no enemies to vanquish the magic girl moaned as Issei severed her second drink while he chuckled at the statement. It's nice to kick back and relax from time to time though Issei pointed out. True the magic girl admitted as she had her eyes glancing up and thought. How is it being a bartender? Serzich's asked curiously. It's weird sometimes it's boring, and sometimes it's hectic, while sometimes it's just calm I don't know how to explain it. Issei replied to the curious Satan who nodded before taking a sip from his drink. Do you have any bartender tales to regal us with? Serzich's questioned. Well yesterday Seraphil nearly got me in trouble. Issei spoke with hesitation Serzich's cocked his eyebrow in interest before leaning forward. This I wanna hear Serzich's spoke with a grin, while Seraphil added her own side. It was just a playful joke. That nearly got me fired and arrested Issei deadpan. while Seraphil smiled sheepishly as she scratched her head. My boss, let's just say is the kind of boss who would beat up her own employees if they do something wrong, Issei began telling as he scratched the back of his neck before continuing the story. She saw me conversing with Seraphil and had reason to believe I was letting a minor to drink and I had less than noble intentions. Thankfully Seraphil managed to prove she was the appropriate age and I thankfully was not put through the shelves behind me, he said with a nervous chuckle, while well, Serzich's laughed at his predicament, and Grafia merely shot a look to the magic girl Satan, who was smiling nervously as she looked to the side. Well it's a good thing you are still in the land of the living, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to taste this magnificent drink, Serzich's complimented before raising the glass to the bartender and downing it. It's not that good, but thank you for your words, Issei tried to deflect the compliment as he scratched as his neck and leaned back. Bartender Chan, another drink. 
Seraph Ol demanded as she finished her drink, and Issei prepared another one for her. However little did the three patrons know that the bartender in front of them had his mind elsewhere, his talk with Rainer had brought up something he nearly forgot and something he should have never forgotten. It's nearly that day he thought inwardly before putting on his bartender smile and serving Seraphil another drink, and the three patrons talked away with the human bartender until the end of his shift and the subsequent closing of the bar. Jerry Blossoms painted his view in the pavement beneath him, but Issei continued walking dressed in his red shirt and jeans while wearing a black jacket, it was a jacket she had gotten him on their first date and he wore it every time he came to visit. Issei's hand carried a rose as he continued walking until he took a left and began climbing a hill. His heart building up a steady pace as he took step after step on the green hill as he reached the top a grey cemetery began filling his vision. He came upon the entrance before taking a deep breath and began walking mentally listing off the rows, as he came to the appropriate one turning left, he walked past a few more grave stones before he stopped to the central one in the row, his breath caught in his throat, threatening to choke him as he read the all too familiar grave stone, Irina Shidu, beloved daughter, he leaned down placing the rows he brought her against a grave stone which remained unblemished and so far not ravaged by the weather or time. Hey Rina he spoke nervously as he remained leaned down in front of her gravestone the words struggling to escape his mouth. He subconsciously rubbed his tattoo under his shirt before pulling out a photo of them. It was them in a photo booth together, Issei had one arm around her while she hugged him back and her head rested against his chest and they both had large smiles on their face. I wish we could spend more time like this god not a day goes by. He began ranting as tears began pooling in his eyes. If only I was a bit stronger, if only I was a bit faster, if only I had the strength to defeat him, we could have been together raising kids together while we lived normal lives, but that wasn't to be, and I hate that it couldn't be I just hate it, tears were now streaming down his face, as he fell to his knees his hand grasped onto the gravestone desperately, please come back. He wept as his hand tightened as much as he could on the gravestone, I'm so as sorry so as sorry I was too weak. He ranted as tears began staining the grass beneath and his cheeks. I'm sorry that I betrayed you. He whispered as his thoughts came back of his betrayal, the guilt of failing to save her. The image of her lifeless body broken beneath him as he laughed and decided to spare him. He glanced up to the sky hoping for some form of answer, but after staring fruitlessly nothing came. I'm sorry Irina, you are in a better place they promised me, and I made sure you were he told her soothingly as he rubbed the top of her gravestone before he tried with futility to wipe away his tears. He barely managed to struggle to his feet, his legs struggling and shaking beneath him as if they were crying themselves, but he managed to stand straight, glancing one more time at her gravestone. I'm sorry he whispered pathetically as he shoved his hands into his pocket and stared at the floor beneath him as his body went into autopilot mode and dragged him back to his apartment. Issei arrived at his apartment, but he froze as he saw who was standing outside his door leaning against the walls of the hallway. The blue hair was a dead giveaway, but so was the wrapped up sword on her back and the black cloak she wore. Zenobia he spoke her name with trepidation, dark yellow eyes met with brown as a small smile formed on the blue-haired woman's lips. Issei, how have you been? She asked as she turned to face him. I'm fine how about you? He replied as he stepped towards his apartment and pulling out his keys as he began unlocking it. But did you she attempted to ask before he cut her off. I did. Please come in, he offered as the sharp clicking of the door opening was heard as he opened the door and held it open for her. Thank you she replied before stepping in. Make yourself comfortable he said gesturing to the small table he had in the kitchen with only two seats on it. She nodded at his offer before resting herself on a seat and leaning her sword against the table. He went into the kitchen and brought two cups of water, he placed one in front of Zenobia before sitting opposite her and holding his own cup. Thank you she thanked him before taking a sip from the cool water. So what brought you here? Issei asked going straight to the point. Besides seeing her grave, there is a lead that he is here she replied bluntly resulting in Issei tensing. Is it just you? Issei asked his tone no nonsense. It's just a lead so yes Zenobia replied calmly, Issei however reacted harshly and smashed his hand against the table. The fuck? It's him we are talking about he could kill you just like he here anted, but didn't dare to finish his sentence as her name got caught in his throat. I came to ask for your help Issei we need you Michael and Gabriel they want you back, the supernatural is changing there is a new rogue element and he is about to start a war she spoke seriously. I I can't Zenobia, I want to be normal he told her, but in his mind images of Zenobia dying assailed him. You can't just keep Drake trapped forever did you think about him when you sealed him? Zenobia pushed to which Issei snarled. Greg had my back and allowed me to do it he retorted. Allowed you but what about wanted? Zenobia pointed out casually while Issei smashed his hand against the table. Shut up, you don't know my pain. He snarled as his emotions began boiling over. I do she was my best friend. I trained with her fought by her and I was there when he. 
Zenobia shouted back as she rose to the challenge. Issei couldn't retort he was just being selfish, she was her best friend, and she was there and tried to save Irina when he couldn't, his snarl intensified, and his grip on his glass tightened. And then we we should have never done that she whispered barely audibly as tears pooled in the corners of her eye, but Issei's heart froze knowing what she referred to, the sensations of the moment came back. The warmth and comfort of their touch, the thrill of doing something so forbidden, but then the immense guilt that racked both of them, only spurred them onto to seek more comfort in each other, but it was futile just another exercise in futility, bile began forming in his throat at the memory, and he looked down to the table in shame. I regret that moment he spoke honestly, Zenobia glanced at him her gaze inscrutable except for anger, you are a coward to say. You insult her. Zenobia shouted but this was enough for him, he stood up and threw his glass behind her, and it shattered just as their conversation did, that out. He roared, Zenobia stabbed one more glance at him before grabbing her sword and marching out of the room, he didn't see the one tear make its way down her cheek. That out. He roared once again as Zenobia slammed the door behind her exit. Issei found himself filled with anger how dare she. After everything how dare she. His body shaking in anger as he clenched his fists. Rah. He roared as he grabbed her glass and threw it across the room before flipping the table over in anger. He stormed into the kitchen and ripped open the fridge a bottle calling to him, he was about to commit a bartender cardinal sin, but he couldn't care as he tore the bottle open and fell back onto the floor, his back pressed against the wall of his kitchen, and he sipped from the bottle of reddish brown liquid and the burning relief of alcohol, but too enraptured in trying to find relief, he didn't notice the tears burning a trail down his face as time ticked away, and so did he consciousness and the guilt. Chapter 4, Cardinal Sins, a gentle knock roused Issei from his slumber to shout an elegant response. Fuck off. He shouted as he laid on his bed with an empty bottle of whiskey, Issei. He heard a gentle voice call, go away. He shouted again at the voice as he found his skull pounding with intense pain and his mouth dry, but the lingering taste of whiskey as his throat burned. Issei I'm coming and the voice spoke calmly and gently it was the voice of Angel, but Issei couldn't respond as the pain in his head intensified mixing with the faint sound of footsteps echoed through his room. He felt a gentle hand on his head of unsurprised warmth, Issei. The gentle voice called his name, but it sounded angelic, Issei titled his head to the left to see the source of the voice. The voice's pale skin almost blinded him as he blinked his eyes desperately trying to get rid of the brightness, blurriness and exhaustion he was feeling. As his vision cleared up, he felt his heart jump into his throat. Blonde locks framed the pale skin as forgiving green eyes greet his own. She was dressed in a pure white full-sleeved dress that covered her legs and arms. Gabriel. He almost shouted as he got up, but quickly clutched his head in pain. Ugh. Gabriel's hand wrapped around Issei as she gently helped him get onto his back. Her touch was gentle and soft. Issei, lie down, he then felt her soft head touch his forehead, and he noticed how hot he was, he was burning up, a thin sheen of sweat framed his body. A pungent smell of whiskey made Gabriel's nose wrinkled, and his shirt was stained with brown liquid. Ugh, Gabriel what are you doing here? Issei barely grunted as he groaned in pain while Gabriel touched his forehead. Shush, just relax now Issei. She hushed him gently as she stepped into his bathroom to get a towel for him, wetting it with cold water before placing it on his forehead. His body shivered at the sudden cold. He could see a frown mar her beautiful lips as her eyes filled with worry. He didn't deserve any of it, after everything he didn't deserve Gabriel's help. She then stroked his cheek gently as her frown became more pronounced. How did you, did you find me? The words barely coming out as his head thumped hard in pain, she sent him a look as she bit her lower lip. Zenobia told me she went to see you then. I don't want to talk about it he quickly snapped as despite his drinking, he could remember their conversation crystal clear and didn't want to talk about it. Sit tight to say she patted his chest gently as she also moved his hand to gently hold the towel against his forehead. She left him in his room as she left to his kitchen, her disappointment multiplied. His apartment was a mess, his living room couch was flipped as were the living room seats. His dining room table was cracked while his fridge was left open with two whiskey bottles left empty in the fridge. Luckily his china was untouched and she procured a glass and filling it with water before casting some healing magic on it. She quickly walked back to the room and kneeled by Issei's bedside. She lifted his head up slowly and put the glass to his lip. Issei greedily gulped down the cool water as it soothed his parched throat. He could feel the magic infused it as the water became cool in his chest, the headache began dissipating. Issei removed the wet towel and got to a half-sitting position with his back resting against the backboard. A small smile graced his lips as he turned to Gabriel. Thank you Gabriel he did not expect to find him encased in a hug by the angel, he tensed up as he felt the warm embrace. Why didn't you call me Issei? Gabriel whispered sadly into his ear, Issei's heart wretched with guilt. Gabriel was the nicest of all the people in the church, unfortunately one of the more naive people as well. She cared deeply for both him and Irina and always encouraged their relationship.
She was also the one who helped convince Michael and the other seraphim to allow him to leave the angels and church. They originally didn't want him to leave, they couldn't he was an asset, a weapon, something they shouldn't have let go of, but they did all because of Gabriel heartfelt words and vouches. The stipulation was his power to be sealed and he would not give loyalty to another faction should he be forced back into the world of the supernatural. The terms weren't harsh if anything they didn't matter for Issei never intended to return until now. The situation had changed the moment Zenobia had told him about that bastard. Despite his regrets with Zenobia she was still a friend and one who was sent on a suicidal mission, he could not stand by and let her die. His mind swirled with doubt but also determination. Gabriel I missed you too. He spoke quietly as his arm slowly and cautiously wrapped around the blonde angel. I know things have been hard on you ice her hand began stroking his back with affection. Issei always had a soft spot for Gabriel and he always came to her for advice as well as Michael. I'm fine Gabriel he informed as he slipped out of their hug and walked past the blonde throwing off his dirty shirt to get a new one. Emerald eyes filled with concern watch every one of his moves. No you're not Issei, you have been lying to yourself so what if I have? Is it wrong to dwell on the past? He retorted, no but it is wrong if it consumes you. She rose to his words, concern evident, I have been watching you Issei, I see how you always go to her grave. How you get this empty, lifeless look in your eyes, and this isn't the first time this has happened to say. She was right it happened once before after she died, he had drunk so much, he nearly attacked Gabriel before he broke down in Gabriel's arms, sobbing and broken. I still love her. I won't ever forget her, and if it means dwelling on the past then so be it, he locked eyes with Gabriel as her lips creased into a frown, she would want you to move on as say didn't care, he didn't want to talk about, and he hated when they tried to get him to move on or talk about it. Let's get to the point why you are here Gabriel, so I can be you and Michael's lapdog. So I can risk my life again. You can't even protect the Excalibur so you need my power. He snapped with venom, Gabriel flinched under his words as she stepped back. You weren't a lapdog, you're my friend Issei, she stepped forward and reached out to try and grasp his hand, but Issei whacked it away and his eyes hardened, just like Zenobia. But you are sending her on a suicide mission and you damn well know it Gabriel. Issei roared and he began huffing in rage, Gabriel flinched at his words. He didn't want to drag it out any longer. Thank you Gabriel for taking care of me, you can leave now his words monotone and lack of care. She tried to reach out to touch him again, but he whacked it away harder. Gabriel got the message, I still care for you Issei, please if you ever want to talk call me love you, she corrected in her mind before walking towards the exit, glancing once more over at the man she loved and cared for, before biting her lower lips and leaving with a heavy heart. Issei sighed, it was better if she left him be. After he heard the click of the door closing, he moved into his living room and began glancing around his apartment, surveying the damage he caused. He glanced at his watch before he sighed once again, he had a few hours before work to fix his apartment. Seraphil skipped along to her favorite bar in the whole world, and a smile graced her lips as she saw her favorite brunette bartender, who had his back turned. She bounced up to the bar and sat directly in front of him. Hey, Ice. She spoke cheerily as she poked him with her wand to get his attention. The bartender turned around, but Seraphil immediately noticed something was up. As a diplomat she was well versed in reading body language, and Issei's was different, and his eyes looked embroiled in confusion and thoughts. Hey Seraphil, one magic girl special coming up he greeted back with a fake smile, it was well faked, but Seraphil was no fool. He turned around to begin fixing her drink. He then turned around and placed the drink in front of the magic girl. How was your day Ice? She asked sipping her drink. Fine how about you? The usual vanquishing evil monsters, casting spells, but I am so bored to say let out a laugh, but it was genuine. Magic girl duties are that bad huh? She could see his lips tugging towards a smile, yeah and don't get me started on the villains, you have fallen for my trap. You may have stopped me this time, but I will be back. She ranted with gesticulation to accompany her rant, such idiot she added as an afterthought before downing her drink, ice another one, your magic girl demands it. She demanded cheerfully as she waved her wand, your wish is my command, her replied without skipping a beat before serving her another drink, hey say do you have a girlfriend? Seraphil suddenly blurted out, she didn't know why she asked it, but it came out, and now she had to pay. She looked at the brunette's eyes to see they were swirling with thoughts as his body tensed barely noticeably. No I don't he answered truthfully, but his mind raced why did she randomly ask him such a thing, Seraphil had never really talked about relationships, but now she suddenly asked him if had one. Something wasn't adding up. He didn't have time to worry, he was more worried about that bastard and whether he was going to jump back into the supernatural world. It still irritated him no outraged him that they sent Zenobia on this suicide mission no less against him. After Seraphil asked a question there was a certain palatable tension for the rest of the night. 
Well Sir Awful thoughts were caught in a whirlwind of confusion in why she had asked to say such a question, and it ultimately led to her leaving sooner than she wanted as she pick up upon the tension. As Say had finished his shift and was simply closing up his bar, tonight was thankfully slow as Sir Awful had left earlier than expected, so he was able to spend a lot of time pondering. Just as he was about close shop and head home, the door opened up and in walked in and raven-haired girl he was familiar with. Brainer. He spoke with surprise. Hey Say, do you have some time to talk? Her voice was filled with sadness that was poorly hidden, while her violet eyes had a pleading look to them. He mentally sighed. Have a seat. Chapter 5. Incensus ad item. Rainer took a seat before Issei as she flicked a lock of her hair over her hair. Issei could already predict the words that would leave her mouth. Can I have something to drink please? Sure he replied like clockwork, he turned around and began mixing a drink that he knew would help lift her spirits. Thanks for letting me in Issei. I just needed somewhere to relax the raven-haired woman admitted. Duff day? He replied without skipping a beat, although he already knew the answer to his own question. She laughed derisively at his question. Yeah, you can definitely say that she looked up at his back as she her lips creased into a frown momentarily before going into a neutral expression. Huh, so did I he replied over his shoulder, earning a look of interest from the fallen angel. He then turned around and served her. The drink was a vibrant violet served with an umbrella. Here you go, on the house. Looks like you need it, he offered with a small smile, his smile caused a small smile to tug on her lips. She then lifted her drink to her lips before taking a small sip of the liquid. A myriad of tastes danced on her tongue, the two most prominent was sweet and fruity, undercut by the slight burn of alcohol. The drink added a bit of fire to the down in the dumps fallen angel as a smile formed on her lips. Wow, that's tasty. What this drink called. Ray's bad day. He joked with a small laugh, she pouted teasingly. Me having a bad day is not something to joke about. Sorry sorry, and how about Violet Delight? It has a nice ring to it she admitted. Reminded me of your eyes, Issei complimented before internally cursing himself. Rainer tensed up at her words before turning her face to the side a small smile at the corners of her lips. Thanks Issei, Suu, what happened to make you have a bad day? She asked, a sigh escaped Issei's lips as he had already prepared the story. Met an old friend of mine, we got into an argument and we left on bad terms. Is the short version of it, but it just left a bad taste in my mouth. He explained while scratching the back of his neck. She nodded in understanding after all no one wanted to fight with their best friend. She began tracing the rim of her cup before taking a deep breath and deciding to speak her mind. I took your advice I met him and asked him if he wanted to go out with me. She continued tracing the rim of her glass as the events played in her head, Issei leaned in and listened intently. Then he just stared at me before he told me he was sorry. He didn't mean to lead me on, and he said he saw me as the daughter he never had. He apologized and said he could never return my feelings. He just kept apologizing, but then I saw Red Eye slapped him and stormed off. Now here I am, sipping a drink and telling my issues to a bartender she laughed derisively, but Issei had enough. The sad expression on her face, the way she bit her lips and her violet eyes so bright and interesting now dull and boring. Stop his tone made the fallen angel flinch and look up, her eyes locked with his determined brown ones. Firstly, I am not just a bartender I am your friend. Secondly, telling your issues to someone is not something to be ashamed of rather advice from your friends is a strong weapon and tool. Also relying on your friends is not a sign of weakness but a sigh of strength and reflection, it shows that you have the strength to ask for help but also that you have a reflective side. Thirdly be proud of yourself Rainer, you got an answer. You now don't have to worry about someone who will never reciprocate your feelings. You're worth a lot more than you think and it saddens me that you are self-depreciating yourself. He leaned forward and his hand gently resting on her upper arm, a small frown formed on his lips. Rainer paused as she let his words sink in and she could only come to the conclusion that he was right and it only hit her that her heart was racing. She then began internally wondering why did her heart race for the brunette, but as she looked into his eyes, she saw someone who cared for his friends and burned with determination. A wide smile graced her lips. You're right Issei, you are right. Ears to your wise words she raised her glass before downing her drink. Now can I have another one? She asked with a smile as Issei smiled back before serving her another drink. This one isn't on the house he quickly added. Aw, oh, come on Issei. After all you basically named the drink after me don't I get royalties? She asked with a happy smile. Nope, I thought I was your friend. I am but I am also your bartender he said with a smile as the two continued talking. Thanks for this Issei, your great friend, Rainer slurred as she walked nearly tripping, had it not been for Issei's timely grabbing of her arm. I know I should have cut off her early he mentally regretted. It was now after midnight and the streets were deserted and Issei was now dragging an intoxicated Rainer home. Yeah and you're a good drunk he said sarcastically. I'm not drunk, I'm just tipsy Rainer declared with cute pout as she looked up at the bartender, his heat skipped a beat at her cute expression. Sure, that's what they all say. Are we there yet? 
he asked his raven-haired colleague. Maybe she commented while tapping her chin and having a thoughtful expression on her flushed face. How about I leave you here and go home? He almost growled which earned another pout from the fallen angel who then hugged his say tightly, her head pressed against his chest. What kind of a man are you to leave a girl outside? She insulted as her violet eyes looked up at his. One who needs sleep he calmly retorted. I'm gonna say, let's walk around for a bit, then you can drop me home, she spoke as she grabbed his hand and began walking. Issei was reluctantly dragged along. Fine but only for a couple of minutes. Rainer dragged him into a nearby park. The park had a small fountain in the middle and benches around it. The park was silent except for the small gentle sound of water escaping the fountain. Rainer took a seat on the bench, her face reflected in the moonlight, while Issei sat beside her. The two had a beautiful view of a full moon the phrase. We should have come here in the evening Rainer said randomly, earning a raised eyebrow from the brunette. How come? Amano Yuma Issei eyes widened in understanding. Evan's evening gaze she smiled at his understanding of the phrase. He called me that once she admitted with a hint of sadness, Issei knew who she was referring to and really didn't want to press the raven beauty. It suits you he did admit, Rainer's heart skipped a beat. She turned to her friend and bartender, her violet eyes locked with his brown ones. In the evening moonlight Rainer could see past the facade he always wore, she could see pain and sadness in his eyes. Pain he was trying to hide, it made her frown as it tugged on her heartstrings. Why are you in pain Issei? She blurted out her self-control non-existent. What do you mean? He spoke, his muscles tensing slightly under his skin it did not go unnoticed. Your eyes they hold so much pain and sadness, she shuffled closer until their legs were pressing against each other, she could feel his warmth through their clothing. Under the moonlight, she could see his jaw was a lot more chiseled than she first thought, but his eyes she loved their color and how expressive they could be. She wanted to feel his skin without the hindrance of clothing her hand gently reached out to cup his cheek, but she found her wrist clasped in his firm hand. His grip was tough, but it was juxtaposed by his soft skin. Let's get you home he spoke as he stood up and let go of her hand. Okay she nodded before grabbing his hand and leading him away, but to her surprise and joy he didn't let go. A pair of eyes watched the situation with growing intrigue. Here we are Rainer announced turning on her heel in front of a house. Alright, I guess that's my job done he said eager to go home and get some sleep. You won't walk me to the door. She sounded hurt, he had to resist the urge to sigh. It won't kill me he admitted as a smile grew on the fallen angel as she walked to the door with Issei in tow. Thank you for everything Issei she thanked him as she wore a genuine smile. It was my pleasure. And sorry for making you walk me home, she admitted with embarrassment as she rocked on her heels and a blush was on her face. If Issei realized, he didn't pay it any mind. Alright if you two aren't getting a room, then I suggest you split a voice interjected, Rainer did a complete 180, as Issei looked past her to see the source of the voice. Hal Werner? Rainer shouted as she sent her a look that indicated she was not happy at the interruption. Hal Werner was an attractive blue-haired woman with dark blue eyes who was gifted in the chess department. She was dressed in a maroon trench coat and matching miniskirt. She was leaning on the open doorway to the house. Do you know how worried I was about you? You didn't even call to tell me where you were or when you would be back, Calwerner scolded to which Rainer glanced at the floor in embarrassment, not being able to say anything in her defense. Now hurry up and get inside, Calwerner demanded, Rainer sent her a nod. Thank you Issei, and much to Issei's surprise she leaned in and kissed him on the cheek. The brunette froze up as he felt the gentle and soft touch of her lips before Rainer basically dashed into the house like a schoolgirl. Good night Rainer he said before turning around eager to leave. Where do you think you're going? Kalwerner called which made Issei stifle a groan. I have to get some sleep its lady replied over his shoulder. It will only take a minute she insisted while he decided it would be better to hear her out than waste time trying to get away. All right then I'm all ears he said turning around to face the blanette. Wanted to thank you as well Kalwerner thanked. For what? Issei asked rather stupidly. Giving her the advice she needed, she was always hung up on Azazel. Never could get over that guy and after all him committing to a relationship is a complete joke. Issei eyes widened slightly at the word Azazel. No way, what would be the chances of it? Ever since he sealed Drake he was unable to detect anything to do with the supernatural. However, his gut was telling him something was afoot. It was no problem, sometimes you need a third opinion he said neutrally. Hmm, I'll see you around I guess the fallen angel said her goodbyes before going back into the house. Issei was finally able to walk home, but he walked home with a nagging feeling in the back of his mind, Azazel was not just a coincidence. Issei was walking home, the street still deserted. His mind raced over the possibilities that the Azazel Kalwerner had referred to was indeed the Azazel who led the fallen angels. If so Issei was up shit creek supernatural and soon he would be forced into it. He was no fool he could see the trainer was trying to kiss him at the park but he wasn't ready and she wasn't thinking properly. A thud shocked Issei out of his thoughts as he found something lying down in the middle of the street at least 10 meters away from the street. 
blue and a small snippet of green caught his eyes as they widened in horror, and his legs began moving. Zenobia. He called out as he easily crossed the distance falling to his knees beside her body. He then felt a warm liquid at his knees and realized she was bleeding, he quickly rolled over onto her chest and saw a massive wound in the middle, a slash. He immediately applied pressure, and it drew discomfort from Zenobia's pale face as her eyes flickered open and shut. Zenobia stay with me. He shouted as he desperately applied pressure as his mind raced with what he could do. He pulled out his phone. Please if you ever want to talk call me his eyes widened as a solution jumped into his head, and he dialed Gabriel's number within one ring it was answered. Gabriel. It's Zenobia the bastard got her. He quickly shouted. I'm coming was the hurried response as he heard the angel's voice of concern, but also underlying anger. Hurry she's a sudden burning sensation pierced Issei's chest and blood split from his mouth. Issei. Issei. Gabriel's voice called as he suddenly went, Issei looked up to see the sneering face of the bastard who caused him so much pain and took away Arena from him. Hey Kokabiel. Issei I am coming. Gabriel shouted with desperation as the phone slipped from his fingers and smacked on the floor. Tears began pooling in the angel's eyes as she could hear his pain through the phone while she raced off to rescue her loved one. Oh how the might have fallen. Still crying over that girl. Well you're about to lose another unless you awaken your power, he taunted as Issei's vision began flickering. Fucking be bastard I'll kill you Issei declared, Zenobia's eyes opened to see a light spear jutting through Issei's chest, and a scream of horror barely escaped her lips as Kakabia laughed. Come on show me what you can do Red Dragon Emperor, he taunted as Issei fell to his side barely holding on as his conciseness leapt away. Issei. A voice called out that did not sound like Gabriel's, but all he felt was pain and burning from his chest, but his left hand as well, and suddenly the world exploded in green. Chapter 6, Incensus Ad Item Part 2 As the world exploded in green, so did a city block of Kuo as the Red Dragon Emperor had been released once again. Issei rose to his full height clad in the crimson red armor of Balance Breaker. Kakabiel just cackled evilly. If I knew you had this much power I would have killed that exorcist a lot earlier. Kakabiel. Issei roared his voice a distorted amalgamation of his own and Drake's. Boost. 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 Explosion. Issei unleashed the power in a shockwave attack that blasted Kakabiel and the third party backwards. Issei now bleed green aura, a testament to the amount of power he was unleashing. Issei. The voice called out in vain once again, little did he know that this voice was Seraphal. She had wanted to come back to try and smooth things over for the awkward situation and tension she had created. She found Issei talking to a fallen angel, she began eavesdropping after all, why would a fallen angel take interest in a human? Soon she was following them, after he dropped the fallen angel home, she was wishing to try and talk to him before the current situation happened. Her mind was racing at a hundred miles an hour, but she only ever came to one conclusion a rather blatant one, Issei Haidu her bartender was the Red Dragon Emperor, right under her nose this whole time. Now he was going berserk and Kakabiel was the source, but right now she had to focus on containment since he had gone rogue. Two seals appeared next to her as her sister and Rias along with their peerages, arrived shock blatant on their faces. What's going on? Rias and Sona exclaimed as they saw a scene of destruction before them. Now is not the time, Rias and Sona set up a barrier we need to contain their power, and someone grab that exorcist and apply first aid now. Seraphil ordered her happy-go-lucky attitude disappearing, the two heiress were shocked they had never seen Seraphil so serious. Sona regained her composure first, it will be done Sona nodded, and so did Rias. Kiba dashed in and grabbed the exorcist, quickly lifting her away from the ensuing fight, and he dashed back to where Rias, Sona along with their peerage, began extending the barrier to protect the town. Akeno. Kiba called out as he laid the exorcist down, Akeno nodded and quickly kneeled down and began applying healing magic. Kiba saw the exorcist eyes flickering, and he knew she would be dying if aid wasn't applied, he grasped the exorcist's hand and squeezed offering what little comfort he could, and she squeezed back. Sona what is the plan? We can't exactly sit here and do nothing Rias turned to her friend, we have to maintain this barrier. A city block was leveled just by unleashing his power, this fight is out of our capabilities, Sona assessed as she pushed up her glasses, how did we miss the red dragon emperor? He was here right under our noses Sona began musing, I don't know but after all this I want some answers, Rias declared as they continued maintaining the barrier, Sona couldn't agree more.
Meanwhile Seraphil inside the barrier had opened up a magic connection with Serzich's. Serzich's, Grafia we have a situation she spoke seriousness evident in her tone. I felt the power spike is it Serzich's ask his tone equally no nonsense. Yes, Rias and Sona are creating a barrier to contain damage, but he is going berserk and going after Kakabiel. She explained quickly. Kakabiel. What's he doing there? He spoke. I don't know but get here now. Seraphil declared and within moments two teleportation circles appeared and Serzich's and Grafia arrived. Grafia go protect Sona and Rias, help strengthen the barrier Serzich's ordered as Grafia nodded before heading off. Serzich's eyes hardened as he saw the leveled block and the amount of power emanating from the Red Dragon Emperor. It's a say Seraphil suddenly spoke quietly, Serzich's eyes widened slightly as he knew that was the name of the bartender. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Seraphil you do know if he Serzich's tried to state the truth. I know Seraphil replied full well knowing what Serzich's was meaning, her fists clenched as nails began digging into the palm of her hand. I guess we will have to sit back and wait Serzich's deciding not to do anything as he began contemplating the gravity of the situation and how it happened. And the Grigori. Bali had a grin on his face as he walked into Azazel's office, their eyes met. Azazel who was currently dealing with a lovely problem called bureaucracy and paperwork, Azazel knew that look on Bali's face too well and knew why he was here. The shockwave of power from the Red Dragon Emperor. I felt it too, you battle maniac Azazel sighed. Then let's go after all my rival awaits Folly declared his grin only widening. Alright you battle maniac, can't catch a break around here, Azazel sighed as he left the paperwork, he and Folly began teleporting to the source of the power. With Raynor and Kalwerner, what the hell was that? Raynor shouted as she could feel the oppressive aura emanating, pushing down on her. The dragon and not just any. Kalawiner deduced. It's the Red Dragon Emperor Azazel suddenly intoned as he and Bali appeared out of a circle they had felt the power in Kuo, so Azazel decided to meet up with his operatives, Raynor gulped this was one person she didn't want to see right now. Lord Azazel. The two fallen angels greeted. Now is not the time for formalities Azazel waved them off. Sir we don't know how this happened, the power just suddenly released seemingly out of thin air, but he must have been hiding in the town. Raynor informed. Kakabiel probably had something to do with it, Bali added as he knew of Kakabiel going rogue. Yeah probably is him Azazel agreed. Kakabiel, why would he reveal himself so openly and now? Didn't he need more time? Raynor asked with doubt. Apparently he had a change of plans Azazel replied. Come on we have to go assess the situation, Azazel ordered as he spread his wings and flew off to the battlefield, along with Bali, Raynor and Kalawiner. Kakabiel. Issei roared as he dashed forward, his fist cocked back. Kakabiel leapt backward and into the air as the ground he was previously in was caved in. He summoned his own light spear before chucking it at the Berserk Issei, an explosion followed, but a crimson mass dashed out clearly unimpeded. A burst of green energy erupted from his right hand, Kakabiel masterfully dodged it a testament to his years of experience. Looks like I will have to take you seriously, he mused as his battle manic grin remained, he threw out both his hands before summoning a circle of light swords and spears. Issei undeterred continued charging Kakabiel snapped his fingers, and they all moved to collide with the target. Issei was blasted backwards into the ground, but he did not let up as he unleashed two bursts of green energy, Kakabiel dodged a first, only to nearly be struck by the second one, was it not for the timely block by his wings, but otherwise he was fine. Summoning more spears, another barrage began as Issei powered through spears being deflected with his fist through glancing harmlessly off his armor. You are disappointingly weak, Kakabiel sighed as Issei got within striking distance of him, he summoned the light hammer, smacking Issei in the face and cracking his armor, but Kakabiel found himself stabbed in the arm by Issei's tail. Kakabiel replied by smashing his fist into Issei's gut, before summoning dozens of light hammers to smash him to earth, and Issei fell like a red comet. The crater formed, but Issei released a blood-curdling scream as the chilling words rang out. Boost. 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 Boost, 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 boost. Suddenly Kakabiel merely saw Issei as a green flash, but relying on his experience, he masterfully dodged an attack from behind, before unleashing a storm of feathers and swords, as he flew backwards. Issei however dodged most of them, seeing a weakness he dashed into Kakabiel punching him across the face, before blitzing around to avoid more light spears and feathers. As red, green and yellow filled the night sky of Kuo. Hmm, so this is the red dragon emperor Azazel commented as he absorbed a fight before him and announcing his presence. Azazel what are you doing here? 
Did you have anything to do with this? Seraphal practically interrogated, Azazel shook his head. Bikabil has gone rogue, I sent Kalawarner and Raynor here to try and track him down so we could deal with him. Azazel elaborated as he gestured to his fallen angel comrades, Raynor did miss the small look sent her way by Seraphal. Clearly, he decided to reveal himself before we could stop him, Azazel muttered in annoyance as he knew the amount of problems this was going to cause. What were his plans? Serzichas asked, a star to war Azazel informed, he stole the Excaliburs and sought to use them on this territory, a soft voice added, as two looked up to see the wide angelic forms of Gabriel and Michael descending. Where is Zenobia? Gabriel asked with worry and a frown as she could not find the exorcist, she is being taken care of by my sister and her friend's peerage. She is in good hands, Seraphal informed as Gabriel relaxed visibly, the Excaliburs were stolen why weren't we informed? Serzichas asked, it was a church matter, we needed to deal with it ourselves, Michael elaborated, what's done is done as Azazel cut in, church weapons, fallen angel perpetrator and devil territory. A recipe for war Seraphal added her two cents the leaders nodded their agreement with this assessment, now the question is how did the red dragon emperor escaped our notice, after all if he reached balance breaker, we would have known about it Azazel spoke accusingly as he looked at Michael and Gabriel, he was allied with the church Gabriel admitted, Serzichas and Seraphal were surprised how did they not know of this was? Serzichas asked with a cocked eyebrow. The Kabil killed his girlfriend. He was unable to save her. He held her in his arms crying. I had never seen someone so broken after that he wanted out we couldn't deny him. And so he left his powers sealed. And never intending to return to the supernatural. Michael explained with sadness evident. Rainer flinched dead girlfriend. Could it be? No it was impossible she shook her head. He was a weapon to you wasn't he? Seraphal accused her words colder than the ice she could create, Michael nodded with shame, it was wrong, but we needed power with the Grigori having the white dragon emperor and devils being able to replenish quickly. We needed a bargaining chip Michael admitted, while Gabriel hung her head in shame as she clenched her fists, but in her heart she believed. Even if he was, I care for Issei Gabriel declared truthfully, Raynor's eyes widened and she froze, the red dragon emperor was Issei. And his girlfriend was killed by Kakabiel. Her mind was now racing as was her heart as she looked over to see Issei receive a punch from Kakabiel, making her flinch slightly at the sound of it. Funny way of showing it, Seraphal muttered as she did not see how Gabriel cared for Issei when they used him as a weapon. Her words did not go unheard by Gabriel as they locked eyes, but as Azazel intervened they could not afford issues, a rogue Kakabiel and Red Dragon Emperor were more than enough. Sai what do we do now? Azazel asked as he looked around for answers, Gabriel was preparing to move to help Issei but an arm stopped her, it was her brother who sent her a look. Let go of me he needs my help. She struggled, but Michael did not budge, if you go you could die. Michael shouted, tears pooled in the corners of Gabriel's eyes, so be it, I can't leave him. But Michael wouldn't budge, Azazel received an answer from the person he least likely expected, we leave him be Vali declared everyone turned to him, if we don't let him defeat Kakabiel, he will be forever haunted by his failure, and therefore he won't be able to fight me properly, Vali stated which made Azazel chuckle. Gabriel stopped struggling, Vali was right if she did not let Issei defeat Kakabiel, he would be forever consumed by revenge or the inability to fulfill it, for his betterment she would not intervene. Not intervening didn't sit well with Seraphal and Raynor, but they agreed with Vali's thinking, and getting in between their fight was tantamount to more destruction. Always thinking about fighting Vali, the others reluctantly decided to do just what Vali suggested, Issei found himself struck to earth once lying in a crater again as Kakabiel drop kicked him. He was losing, for all of Issei's power and rage, he could not defeat Kakabiel's experience and power, he was only human. He was being taunted that grin, he was enjoying this, he wasn't even breaking a sweat, it angered him, he felt like a failure, this was his opportunity for revenge, but he just didn't have enough power to defeat him and avenge Arena. In this moment there was clarity in voices, there's a choice of voice whispered, an option another added, what do you have to lose give in, wipe that smirk off his face, face the full extent of power, avenge her. Drake's voice of reason was lost in the torrent of voices of past users, unable to stop his partner from condemning himself to his destruction. Issei rose to his full height before he raised his arms, dozens of green orbs began appearing and circling. Vali's eyes widened, Vali. Olivian warned, but he didn't need to say it twice. At back he is activating Juggernaut Drive. Now it's getting interesting, Kakabiel cackled as he held his arms open, adrenaline flowing, heart racing, and he licked his lips in anticipation as he felt the joy and ecstasy of battle. Say don't. Gabriel shouted as she tried to run to him, but found herself stopped by her brother who restrained her. Now, let go of me Michael. He needs me. She struggled, but Michael dragged her away. He won't recognize you in Juggernaut Drive. We have to let him burn himself out fighting Kakabiel, then we can restrain him and try to bring him back if not, you know we have to do as Azazel explained as they dashed away from the battlefield, Say. 
Gabriel called out in vain her arm desperately trying to reach for him, Issei. Seraphal tried calling out as well on the faint hope her chance he would stop, but their words fell on the deaf ears as they begrudgingly retreated. Little did Issei know there were three women who very concerned for him. It's happening the voices spoke with excitement, they succumb always succumb the voices, I, who am about to awaken, am the heavenly dragon who stole the principles of domination from God, I laugh at the infinite and I grieve at the dream, I shall become the red dragon of domination, and I shall sink you to the depths of the crimson purgatory. Juggernaut Drive. The world once again exploded in green as the full might of the red dragon emperor was unleashed. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.